Hey friends, it's just good. So it's been a little while since I sat down and did like any sort of illustration for myself, like one of my big old colorful art pieces. Long story short, I got a little bit burnt out and decided to put more effort into my music channel for a little while. But after some time, I've now finally got the itch to sit down and draw something. So in today's video, we're going to walk through the process of how I moved from my iPad to doing an illustration on the computer and then something a little bit extra. So without further ado, let's get stuck into it. I started out by sketching my ideas in Procreate. I often use Procreate to do a lot of my sketches because I find it really easy to just pick up and jump straight into drawing. I didn't really have a clear goal in mind, I was just drawing whatever came into my head at the time. I really loved drawing a lot of monstrous looking dudes twisting around one another. Things started off with this demonic looking guy and then I surrounded him with faces. I drew this cool looking dude, which I really like actually, and I might come back and use him for another piece someday. As I drew more and more, I started putting in a bit more focus into this guy with the speaker on his head. And some of the little twisted critters down below him. I realized I really liked what was going on here more than the rest of my sketch, so I decided to copy those files into Affinity Designer and start on arranging the draft. While I love Procreate for roughing out my art, I definitely prefer finishing all of it off in Affinity Designer. Having all of the drawing tools from Photoshop and Illustrator rolled into one app gives me a huge amount of flexibility to bring my artwork to life. And I love the fact that I can bounce my projects back and forth between my iPad and my Windows computer. So I'm not really tied down to any one device. Now, I would love to show you the whole process of me finishing this piece, but when it came time for me to edit, something was very, very wrong. Okay, so while I've been editing together this video, I've realized something terrible has happened. I'm missing a ton of footage. Not a little bit of footage, like a lot of footage. The good news is that a lot of my other videos actually cover this entire process from start to finish. Uh, it's kind of repetitive to me after a while. So if you need like a quick sort of A to Z guide on how to do all of this, uh, I'll leave a link to the video on my channel down below in the description. But I've also got a really more in-depth webinar that I did for a creative session over on Affinity's channel. So I'll also leave a link to that down below in the description too. But let's not have this sort of be the end of the video. Uh, this has actually given me a really cool idea to create something new and try out something a little bit different. I wanna see if I can animate this illustration and bring it to life. For those who have been watching my channel for a while, you might have remembered that a couple of years ago, I experimented with an animation program called Moho. I used it to animate a logo for my sister and I also sort of just played around by creating myself and doing a little walk cycle for a bit. But really why I bought Moho was because I wanted to find a way to animate my characters. Now, I know that you can use things like After Effects and like uh, Flash and whatnot to sort of bring your stuff to life, but I never really found them useful for bringing my actual artwork to life. The unique part about Moho is that not only can you like draw within the app, but you can import images and then rig them up the same way you would a 3D character with bones and everything, and then animate those, making the whole thing a lot easier and giving you a lot more sort of control and finesse about how certain things move. Now, I have attempted this in the past uh, with the varying levels of success. Uh, it didn't really turn out very well all the time, but I'm ready to try again. And I feel like this illustration will be the perfect candidate to see if I can get it to work. And just before we move on, I really just want to quickly announce that I finally launched my very own website. So you can go over to www.riskit.com.au and there's a big old site there now. I'll probably ditch my old Etsy store because I was having a few issues with that. Uh, but yeah, basically you can now find all of my merch, all of my art tutorials and my music tutorials all in one convenient place. You can get my digital products, which at this point is really just a sample pack. But hopefully in the future, if I ever make a brush pack or something, I can host this here. There's a blog where there's going to be like updates with what I'm working on and what you can hope to see. The new stock is about to launch on the website soon and I'll probably be adding this illustration to a print or a t-shirt there. So be sure to head over there and check out all of our merch. You can also scroll down to the bottom and there is a newsletter section. So make sure that you sign up for the newsletter if you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Risk It. Anyways, all right, I know you've had enough of that. Let's finally get back into the project. 
It's always been a really big dream of mine to bring my artwork to life. And, and I don't mean like redrawing my artwork so that it's simpler and easier to animate. I mean like actually bringing the original artwork to life. And I finally feel like that's possible with Moho. In fact, I've actually gone ahead and done a little bit of a test. Now, because it's been a couple of years, I had to relearn Moho all over again, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. I sort of didn't really push it far enough and I had like you know a few issues that I had to like check out the user manual for but once I figured it out and had this little test going I realized at this point just how far I could push this program how far I could push my artwork to do what I wanted so yeah really happy with the test of this little guy now let's see if we can apply it to the rest of the illustration I started off by using affinity photo to mask out all of the different elements of the speaker head guy I needed to make sure that all of his arms, wires, head, torso, and legs were all separated so that he was going to be easier to rig up in Moho. You'll see that I need to repaint certain parts of the image once they're broken up. These obviously weren't parts that were visible in the final illustration, but now that we're going to have him moving, we need to paint those parts in because they are going to be seen. To pull this off, I'm using various in-painting methods, the clone and healing brushes, and sometimes I'm just even coming in and repainting it to best match the original drawing. I did this whole thing with the mouse and keyboard, so it took me a little while. Now, you're probably asking yourself at this point, wouldn't it have been easier if I just got my graphics tablet out and redrew all of these parts rather than using a mouse and keyboard? The answer to that is yes. <laughs> yeah, it would have been way easier. I'm an idiot. Once all of those parts were separated into different layers with the correct naming, I saved the document as a PSD and imported it into Moho. Doing this actually brings all of your artwork into Moho with everything already set up in its own layers and the correct names for each one. Now, I kind of rigged this guy up a little backwards. I started applying mesh warps on the head at first and I really wanted to see if I could get it deforming in a specific way. And after that, I started using bones to make the general skeleton of the guy and then started applying mesh warps to everything else. Now, if you don't know what mesh warping is, you can essentially bring in any piece of artwork or illustration or a photo even to Moho and then apply a mesh warp to it. It'll sort of figure out where all of the edges are or you can just add them in yourself. You can add points to it. Other way, it's super flexible. What's even better is that then you can apply these things called smart bones, where you sort of create a bone and then go into its own little timeline and you set up like what should happen if I bend this bone this way? How should my arm deform or how should the head rotate? And once you've set up that little sort of smart action, you jump back into your main timeline and every time you move that bone around, that action is going to happen. It might sound like pretty basic at first, but once you have like a bunch of these different smart bones all sort of moving and interacting with one another you can get some really amazing results that almost look 3d even though you're just using a 2d character now you can apply these actions to any bone really so you'll see me here defining how the mesh of the arm should warp every time his arm bends this way i have complete control over how the arm deforms so that it works exactly the way i need it to as I go through the rest of this process, you'll see me applying more mesh warps and smart actions to things like the head, the torso, the other arm, and the legs. I set up a couple of smart bones to help rotate the head and the torso too. So once everything was mostly in place, I created some rough poses for the animation, and voila, we finally have some movement. I went through the same process of rigging and animating the other little blue guy. The footage is missing from that too. And at this point, most of the animation was complete, or so I thought. So at this point, the main animation is pretty much done. Well, I, th I mean, I thought I'd actually completely finished it. But then after sort of watching the whole thing back, I realized I'd forgotten something. The wires. I must have forgotten to mask them out while I was doing the whole character thing in uh, Affinity, like breaking up all of the bits. So rather than going back and pulling the wires from that illustration, I think it'd be cool to try and redraw them using Moho's drawing tools. So I got to work on recreating all of the wires that wrap around this guy. I was able to create an image texture using Affinity Designer and place that inside of the wires so that they have the same texture as the rest of the artwork. Next up, I used one of Moho's new features, which is a compressible curve. 
This lets you create a curve around different parts of your artwork and rig it up to animate a little bit smoother. It's really, really great for things like wires and tentacles, but can be used for other stuff too, just like arms and legs. I actually had a fair bit of trouble getting it working at first, but after some trial and error, I finally understood how all of it worked. Okay, so the final animation is now complete. Uh, now the only thing left to do is add in all of this green smoke and fog that's moving in around all of the characters. In my original test, I created the smoke using After Effects, but I wasn't sure if I liked it yet. I decided to try and use Moho to animate the smoke, and while it was a really fun process, ultimately I didn't wind up using it. I think if I spent a little bit more time, I could probably get this working the way that I want, but I think this time I'm just going to take the easy route and do the fog in After Effects, just because I'm more comfortable with it. As I started putting the finishing touches and effects on my animation, I started to get really excited. As I said earlier, seeing my drawings animate has always been a dream of mine ever since I can remember. I'd tried this in countless pieces of software over the years, but the task was either too tedious or the software just wasn't flexible enough for me to pull off what I wanted. And I don't mean just sort of animating any old artwork. I, I literally mean taking my drawing and making that drawing move. I think Moho has finally answered my prayers here and I'm super excited to see what it can do for my next project. So after a few days work, my animation is finally complete. I definitely feel like I could have done this a lot faster, um, but obviously getting my head around all of these new tools and understanding how a lot of them worked definitely sort of added on a lot of the time. I mean, I had to watch a lot of different tutorials and read through the manual like 10 times in order to get this to work. But now that I have that knowledge, looking back, I probably could have knocked this out in a day, maybe even less. Either way, I'm super stoked to be able to show you the final animation. Let's take a look. Thank you so much if you made it all the way to the very end of this. I really hope that you all enjoyed the video. Uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And please don't forget to check out my website. I spent a lot of time working on that and I really hope that it proves to be like a useful learning resource for all of my viewers. Hit the like if you like, and if you don't, tell me why. Please subscribe, check me out on Patreon and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.